I mean, anybody's here tonight, and I think it was already that late. We ready to start, guys? Good evening. Welcome to the City Commission meeting. Uh, please turn off all cell phones during the meeting tonight. Uh, we will begin with a call to order with the Pledge of Allegiance followed by a silent meditation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is Joel here? Joel Megan. Okay. See you. Whereas water is our most valuable and important natural resource, playing a vital role in our daily lives, and whereas a safe, reliable water supply is critical to the success of our community, and whereas we often take water supply for granted until it is threatened, either by drought, water main breaks, or some other event. And whereas we are all stewards of the water supply and infrastructure upon which future generations depend, and whereas the water produced by the Lovemorth Water Department is the most reliable and best tasting water in all of Lovemorth County, now therefore I, Nancy Bowder, Mayor of the City of Lovemorth, do hereby proclaim May 7th through 13th, 2017, as Lovemorth Drinking Water Week. Shike here. Good evening, Wendy. Whereas progress has, America's progress has been driven by pioneers who think big, take risks, and work hard. And whereas from the storefront shops at Anchor Main Street to the high tech startups that keep America on the cutting age, edge, small businesses are the backbone of our economy and the cornerstones of our nation's promise. And whereas small business owners and Main Street businesses have energy and passion for what they do. And whereas when we support small businesses, jobs are created and local communities preserve their unique culture. And whereas the city of Leavenworth, Kansas supports and joins in this national effort to help America's small businesses do what they do best. Grow their business, create jobs, and ensure that our communities remain as vibrant tomorrow as they are today. Now, therefore, I, Nancy Bowder, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, do recognize the week of April 30 through May 6, 2017, National Small Business Week. Thank you. Would you like to say a few words? Sure. Oh, as you all know, we have some of the very best creative, amazing small businesses in the Leavenworth community, and especially downtown. So um, just encourage everybody to uh, live local, support them. Um, support them even more as the water line goes down Cherokee and as the Second Street Bridge goes in and uh, make sure because they will all be open but they're just amazing and we continue to work with a lot of entrepreneurs um, new things are coming in and certainly there's some things going out as well as we see but it's always fluid downtown we're always there to help them thank you Steve Grant Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for planting of trees. And this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska. And Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the, wor and the world. And whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce life-giving oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. 
And whereas trees in the city of Leavenworth, Kansas, increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community. Now, therefore, I, Nancy Bowder, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, do hereby proclaim April 28, 2017, as Arbor Day. Would you like to say anything? Just, just real quick. Okay. We will have an Arbor Day tree planting ceremony uh, this Friday, uh, April 28th. It will be at North Esplanade Park at 11 a.m., so I'd like to invite everybody to attend that. It will be at the site of our uh, sister city, Omihachiman, Japan. Japan, and we will be uh, adding to the little grove of Yoshino cherries that we have there. Oh, uh, wonderful. Yeah, we'll be adding two more. There's three there currently. So, so please come out this Friday at 11 o'clock. Hey, Thanks. Steve, sorry. Um, oops, sorry. Maybe you know this, but uh, you go to Kansas uh, Wildlife Forestry, believe it or not, there's a forestry division in Kansas. They, they list the top, uh, or every uh, species of tree in Kansas, you know, cottonwood, the bur oak, the pin oak, right. and they have the largest one everywhere in the state. And I think like 95% of them are in Leavenworth County, Atchison County, maybe some in Jefferson. And there's some in the city of Leavenworth. There's a lot of them on Fort Leavenworth, which is the biggest tree of that species. I'm wondering if, you know, you see some, if you can look at that and then maybe put a little marker on some of the trees. Like we may have the largest bur oak in Kansas at Havens Park or wherever it might be, I don't know. But I remember seeing that because some of them were on school property uh, when I was on the school board had that. There's a big one out by, well, Muncie School now, or Xavier School that one goes down in a ditch there. Correct. There's a lot of state champions uh, yeah. in Leavenworth and, and on Fort. Uh, our ginkgo on the corner of, of these grounds here is a close second to the state champion ginkgo that is on Broadway. That's just, yeah. just south of downtown. Yeah. So, I, and I don't know if, you know, if we can put a little plaque, just something to think about. And but there are a lot of, they're all, they're <laughs> all right here in, uh, in, in this two or three county area. You're correct, yeah, and it's a pretty extensive list, and there are a lot of them in this. Yeah. In, in Dodge the, City doesn't have many trees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a listing uh, of all the state champions oh, okay. throughout yeah. the state of Kansas that I can distribute. Yeah. It's interesting. Is that the event rain or shine on Friday? Rain or shine. Okay. Um, we've uh, we've planted uh, more than one tree on Arbor Day in the rain. Okay. <laughs> um, so bring your umbrellas and I'll have a tent out there. <laughs> what time again? Great. 11 a.m. Just want to let the public know if it is rain or shine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Christy Lee. National Travel and Tourism Week. Whereas travel matters deeply to the economic prosperity of Kansas as well as to business wealth and the comfort and pleasure of individual uh, travelers. And whereas travelers sp uh, spending in the state of Kansas generated an economic impact of Tevin, uh, psh, excuse me, generated an economic impact of 10.4 billion in 2015 as traveler dollars flowed through the Kansas economy. And whereas traveler spending generated 588 million of all Kansas state and local tax revenues, resulting in a tourism tax contribution on average of $525 per Kansas household. And whereas the city of Leavenworth realized more than 4.45 million from overnight visitor expenditures in 2016, validating the unique significance of the American travel industry in the lives and citizens of um, Leavenworth, Kansas. Now, therefore, I, Nancy Bowder, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, do recognize the week of May 7th through 13th, 2017, as National Travel and Tourism Week. Okay. Did you Thank you for the proclamation. And just a quick note, uh, we're actually partnering this year with the Leavenworth Times and then also the City of Lansing during National Travel and Tourism Week. And we'll be rolling out the promotion next week or so, so be on the lookout for it. It's uh, You have a stake in tourism and that. And it's this year's theme is mainly honoring all the people that are behind the scenes that really help tr uh, promote tourism throughout the year. So be looking for that, and it'll be fun. Thank you. Love more spring cleanup day. Melissa Bauer. Hello. 
The Leavenworth City Commission is committed to working toward making the city of Leavenworth the most attractive, livable, healthy, and vibrant community possible. And your elected leaders realize it takes the goodwill and hard work of all citizens to achieve such lofty visions and are therefore encouraging all Leavenworth citizens to assume responsibility in maintaining a clean and attractive neighborhood environment. And whereas such collaborative efforts can serve to foster a sense of community, invigorate a sense of pride about the community, serve as an opportunity for organizational and leadership skill development, and reinforce the virtue of personal responsibility while resulting in a more attractive community with a higher quality of life. And whereas a spring cleanup kickoff will be held on Saturday, May 16th, sorry, Saturday, May 6th, 2017, at 8.30 a.m. with the ceremony at Henry Leavenworth Elementary. Now therefore, be it resolved that the Leavenworth City Commission of the City of Leavenworth, Kansas, hereby proclaims May 6, 2017 as Leavenworth Spring Cleanup Day. So the ceremony begins 8.30 a.m. May 6th at Henry Leavenworth Elementary School. You guys are all invited to come out, get a couple donuts, and have some coffee. We have some amazing groups that have done this from year to year, and it's really neat to see them just continuing to participate. And um, There's a group, Bethel AME, that does up by Jefferson Park. They have hundreds of, a couple hundred people, and they pick up a lot of trash. There's a group uh, of young people scouts from Fort Leavenworth that do the area around Mulman Park and um, David Brewer Elementary School. There's a group that does Havens Park. There's a group that does Ray Miller Park. And so we can continue to, to rely on our young kids to pick up trash around the community. It's kind of neat. Next item on the agenda is old business. Consideration of the previous meeting minutes. Do I have a motion? Madam Mayor, I move to accept the minutes of the April 11th, 2017 regular meeting. Second. So moved and seconded. Please begin voting with Commissioner Weekly. Aye. 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 That's five to zero. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda, new business, citizen participation. Um, items not listed on the agenda or any any petitions. Is there anyone who would like to speak from the general public? Seeing none, we'll move on. General items. Consider street and parking closure biking across Kansas event. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Commission. I'll let Carla handle this item, uh, but I did want to let the Commission know that uh, Chief Kitchens isn't here tonight, but we did hold a full staff meeting with all the participants or the organizers of this, um, and PD will be in charge of all the barricades, and they're okay with this, and we, we've gone through that whole step, just so you know that that, that part's been done. So, mm -hmm. Carla. Okay. Uh, Madam Mayor and Commissioner, the, um, this is uh, to consider the closure of Delaware Street from Esplanade Street to 3rd Street and a portion of the parking lot at the northwest corner of Esplanade Street in Delaware. That's the southeast portion of the lot. That would be on Saturday, June 17th from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. for the finish of the Bike Across Kansas event. Uh, the Bike Across Kansas event is a recreational <coughs> bicycle tour that crosses the state of Kansas within a space of eight days and has been held since 1975. And this year, and the route varies each year, but this year um, Leavenworth has been selected as an ending point. Um, the majority of the cyclists are expected to um, arrive during that two hour period. They'll kind of trickle in after that, the majority will be within that two hour period. So that's why they request just for that two hours. Um, there are several members in the audience um, we've got um, Wendy from Main Street and um, Brendan from the bike shop. Um, Brandon Johannan, uh, Johannes from the chamber was unable to attend. He did provide a letter of support that everybody has um, at their seat, mm -hmm. um, but he did want to make sure that um, you know they were fully in support of this and wanted to provide that letter. Okay. So, Brandon, did you want to say anything tonight? Uh, Mayor, uh, I, don't know. I just want to say that. Uh, one number, and that number 
is 850. 850 riders, all their families, um, all their support crew, all those people are going to go down right down the center of downtown Leavenworth in a two hour period. Um, we haven't done anything to pull them here. Uh, they're coming here because they selected Leavenworth. And so we feel, obviously, from the bike shop, that it's an outstanding opportunity to make a good impression on people. And I will say another number, and that's 23. 23 different states these people are already coming from. 23 states, 850 people. And the majority of these people are going to come from Kansas. Um, but but it's, I, we feel it's an outstanding opportunity. Uh, we've talked to the merchants on Delaware and many of the other merchants downtown. And there has been unanimous support from everybody who we talked to. Okay. But, uh, okay. Where do they start that morning, Tongi? Uh, they start in Tonganoxie at Tonganoxie High School. It's about a 20-mile ride, yeah. and most of these folks are early risers, so uh, we expect them to arrive here. There's not a lot to eat in Tonganoxie at 6.30 in the morning, uh, so we expect them to arrive here early, 8, 8.30, and to be hungry when they get here. Um, and and uh, I think that's good for, for our restaurants and, and, and our civic organizations that would provide food there. I remember about five, eight years ago when they ended in Leavenworth before, actually ended up down at St. Pamela Bridge, they all had to dip the coal in the river or something. Is that doing correct. the same this time or not? They're, they're doing the same thing. Unfortunately, last time they ended at David Bird Park. Yeah, but a lot of them went down there and dipped there. Yeah, and right. They, and and they there was a little going. bit of confusion about that. This year, uh, we've encouraged them to end the whole thing at the community center. Okay. So that's okay. the driving force. Uh, when they would go through our... Uh, two blocks there on Delaware, they can make a decision there right then to turn right to the community center or turn left and go down and dip their wheels. And most of them will do that. It's 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 an emotional thing. Yeah. You've ridden 500 miles across the state and want to touch the Missouri River. Uh, and so we, we have a plan to address that as well. You said 850 riders plus family? Right. So Over 1,000 people probably. Uh, yes. Yeah. So the, the riders themselves, some of their family will be on the ride. A lot of them will be just coming here to pick them up. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So, again, a great opportunity for us. That's right. cool. exposure. Yeah. Great exposure. Great yeah. exposure. Mm -hmm. Great. It's fun to watch them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are you ready for a motion? I'm ready for a motion. <clears throat> Madam Mayor, I move that we uh, approve <coughs> the street and parking lot closure for biking across America. Sorry. Uh, Kansas event. Oops, sorry. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, please begin voting with Commissioner Rainey. Aye. 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 That's five to zero. <coughs> okay. Okay. Next item is mayor's appointments. Thank you, Brendan. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, I move to recommend the following appointments. Building Code Board of Appeals, reappoint Brett Napier to a term ending May 1, 2022. The Board of Zoning Appeals, reappoint Ron Bates to a term ending uh, May 1, 2020. Appoint Jan Horvath to a term ending May 1, 2020. City Planning Commission, reappoint James Byrne and John Koresh to a term ending May 1, 2020. Appoint Sherry Hansen to a term ending May 1, 2020. Electrical Board of Appeals. Appoint Lance Laven to a term ending May 1, 2022. Grow Leavenworth County Development Corporation. Appoint Lisa Reynolds Nevins to an unexpired term ending May 31, 2018. Uh, the Library Board, reappoint Deborah Boykley and Pauline Graber to terms ending April 30, 2021. The Mechanical Board of Appeals, appoint Joseph Brightwell to a term ending May 1, 2022. The Plumbing Board of Appeals, reappoint Dennis Rogers to a term ending 5-1-2022. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Please begin voting with Commissioner Weekly. Aye. 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 Pass five to zero. Next item on the agenda, the 2017-2018 City Commission Goals. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Commission. Um, the City Commission held its annual goal setting session on Wednesday, April 12th. 
City Commission annually sets goals that are large uh, items that help direct staff work, help inform us in creation of the budget and in the capital budget. Uh, staff then collects those um, and refers to them throughout the year as we continue our work. It's not an exhaustive list of all the Commission's priorities nor what staff will do, but um, a representative list of some of the major items. I'm not going to go through all of the changes we made from last year to this year, but just a couple highlights um, that we've added. I believe we added something in each subsection, which is, I think, a good thing. Um, under economic development, we added to explore some options to market the new business park, which, uh, as everybody knows now, we have full funding from the county, um, and we plan to issue the RFP this week for the business park, so I think that's a good, good goal to have in there. Support local and destination transportation efforts for the city. Under downtown and development and revitalization to plan and pursue future downtown and northeast TIF area improvement projects. Under tourism to identify projects and programs to reinvest the transient guest tax funds. Uh, community improvement, um, establish a city funded source for demolition of blighted properties to help expedite the process of getting some of those properties uh, cleared away um, for our, the sake of our neighborhoods. Community amenities, streamline registration, reservation, and payment process for parks and recreation projects. Uh, I think the largest change was in public safety. We added quite, uh, a, a, quite a few goals, um, including making state funding of mental health facilities a top legislative priorities, and then continue to grow and expand our crime analysis and mapping initiatives. Uh, the large item under fire is to just start to explore the replacement of Fire Station 3. This is obviously one that will be on here for a couple of years as we go through that process. Um, we added a new category, roadways and infrastructure. Um, that replaced financial management, which is now a subhead under outreach and transparency. Uh, large items on that is to create a long-term collector and arterial street plan so we can begin to systematically address items that come up continuously, such as Thornton, Limit, Vilas, 10th Avenue, County Road 5, and others. Under infrastructure, explore alternative funding sources for stormwater projects. Um, uh, outreach and transparency under public information. Explore opportunities for a new city website with increased usability, usability transparency, and mobile capabilities. Under openness, license, list licensed tree trimmers and provide a link to state licensed roofers on the city website. Uh, financial management, we were able to, uh, can, we completed quite a few policies last year and we added quite a few more, including an investment policy, grant management policy, uh, and a cash management, management policy, which again I call to change that to cash management. Under other items during general support, the only change we made was to change LCDC from uh, quarterly reports to semi-annual. So uh, we'll see them twice a year, but we also see them at budget time, and we also see them at their annual meeting, which most of the commission usually attends. So we'll still see them quite a bit. Those are what I have here. Again, this is not an exhaustive list or a complete list of all the stuff we'll work on during the year, but provides, um, and we'll post this on the website so the public can see what we're working on. Um, and ask any questions that they may have from that. So I, I think I got everything from the session, but if I didn't, let me know. Um, we can always amend these um, at any time. Okay. But we need a motion tonight, right? Yeah, we usually formally approve the goals. Okay. Any questions or comments or anything? We're pretty well covered. I think we've got great time. expectations, so. <laughs> Madam Mayor, I move that we accept the 2000. 17-2018 City Commission goals as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded to accept the goals as presented. Um, please begin voting with Commissioner Rainey. Aye. 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 That's passed five to zero. Next item on the agenda, bids, contracts, and agreements. Consider a contract for performing arts center HVAC upgrade phase two. Madam Mayor, Commissioners, this is the uh, Bids for the uh, phase two of the Performing Arts Center HVAC upgrades. We just recently completed phase one, uh, which you may recall is the upgrade of the cooling system. We have just a little bit of training left to do on some of the uh, computer software um, that controls that system, which will, it'll actually control all of the system. This uh, phase two is now to upgrade the heating side of things, replace the boiler. Um, the old steam boilers will be, will be replaced with hot water boilers as well as getting heat back to the front of the building at the Performing Arts Center, which it hasn't had heat to the front of the building in my 15 years here. I'm not sure how far back that goes. 
Um, we received uh, bids were opened on Tuesday, April 18th. We received three bids um, from uh, first one was from BCI Mechanical in the amount of $176,408 for the base bid. D'Agostino Mechanical Contractors base bid in the amount of $244,435 and the Martin Mechanical bid was not read. There is uh, the budget impact. There's 153565 in the 2017 CIP for this project. The balance of the overage, 22843 can be accommodated from funds remaining from our phase one, which came in at a little over almost almost $26,000 under budget. Okay. So with that, the staff is recommending the base bid from BCI Mechanical in the amount of $176,408. And then due to that amount, we're not uh, recommending al alternates one and two at this time. Okay. So with that, if there's any questions, I may try and answer for you. How much was phase one again? Approximately ninety-five thousand. So this is two hundred seventy-five thousand, two hundred seventy thousand dollars approximately for the HVAC. Right. Uh, yeah, I know it's performing arts center, and those folks use it. And they have quite a few plays every year. Is there other uses that we can get more bang for a buck out of it uh, without displacing the? Riverfront community players. Uh. We've had some inquiries to that. Um, one of the, the things is, and like you said, they have several um, plays throughout the year. What they do is, is they do a lot of set building. It's the minute they one play is completed, it gets torn down, and they start uh, immediately um, trying out for the next one. They start right. building sets. Uh, so it is used. Even though there's only, I believe, seven productions a year, yeah. I believe is what it is, and then a couple of jazz yeah, concerts. Work that goes on. Um, but it's they're in there almost daily uh, throughout the week. That's what makes it difficult to to try and use. We've had some inquiries about uh, maybe having a wedding in there or something like that, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's one of the issues we run into. Is they are in there almost every day. Yeah. yeah. Steve, refresh my memory. What's the third phase? The third phase has to do with the air handling system. Um, it's it's much. Uh, we don't have nearly as much budgeted um, as far as the air handlers underneath underneath the entire building. There's some code issues uh, where at the time when they were put in, just some simple things that, that that met code at the time that don't now. Wiring that needs to be put into conduit, um, and then some work on the actual air, air handling units themselves, um, and making sure that the airs getting to all the different uh, registers and everything efficiently. Um, that's, so that's mainly what the okay. third phase is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Concerns? Motion? Madam Mayor, I move that we, what was there a question? I'm sorry. Motion? Uh, oh, Do you want to uh, Madam Mayor, I move that sorry. we uh, uh, approve the contract with BCI Mechanical in the amount of $176,408 for phase two of the uh, performing arts center. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Please begin voting, Commissioner Weekly. Aye. 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 Okay. Why wasn't Martin Mechanical read? They didn't meet the specs. They didn't have everything required okay. and with their bid. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, do we have a consent agenda tonight? All right, I'd like to move forward for approval claims for April 8th, 2017 through April 21st, 2017 in the amount of $621,913.13. Net amount for pay number eight, effective April 14, 2017 in the amount of $283,446.42. There's no fire and police pension at this time. Second. Been moved and seconded um, to accept the claims. Please begin voting with Commissioner Rainey. Aye. 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 That's been passed by two zero. You, um, any other items the commission would like to address or city manager? I will let the commissioner. Okay. I have nothing. Nope. I just Aye. have one. Uh, thing real, real quick. I got a call earlier this week and I just wanted to pass this compliment on to the uh, animal control 
A uh, gentleman evidently came out and found a rather large black snake wrapped around his cable <laughs> on the outside of his house. And uh, he got a hold of the animal control and he sent a couple people out there. And uh, he called me to let me know they did a great job in removing it. Very professional, very polite. So he wanted to make sure the compliment was paid on the animal control and specifically the uh, supervisor, Wes Klein, and our new officer, Teresa Osborne. Good job, guys. Okay. okay. Um, I'd just like to say, uh, again, the, uh, the group out at Havens Park this, this uh, last Saturday, um, the Lions Club did an outstanding job. Um, they worked there for about three hours. We painted, repainted the sign, the old sign. And I hope when you get ready to put a new sign up, you leave the old sign there because it is kind of historic. It's been there since before I was born, so you know how old that is. Anyway, the, a group called Trail Mob has been working on the trails up there, and I know there's been others up there too, but I really encourage people to come and use the park. Um, I'm seeing more and more use out there. It's nice to see the, the bathroom torn down, and someday, sometime we'll have a new bathroom and, uh, and some park benches and other things out there. But it really is a beautiful park, and please come and enjoy it. I have just one thing. I had a request from a citizen to um, look into long ago when uh, the flooding happened in 2005. They had um, uh, prison la labor from Lansing and that come out and, mm -hmm. and want to like scour through. And they've been, and he's requested that if we could look at doing that again. I'm not really for that. Um, Although I, I did say I would pass his request along, I said it's, and I just explained to him some of the challenges it's of doing that supervision, you know, coming out and and Lansing Correctional and 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 the USB are less inclined to do those things, you know, more often than that. But I just wanted to pass on that request, you know, since it is we're going into spring cleanup. Just wanting to. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I, I think we all got that uh, email yeah. request. And I remember years ago, there used to be more prison labor used in town. I think the only place that I really see them now, they do the roadways and lamps you know, along, yeah. uh, along the highway. And I don't know if they're reticent to bring them in town. I mean, they have to, by the time they get them in, and they get them here, you get them for about an hour and a half because they have to go through all their security checks to get them out of there. You get them for an hour and a half, and you have to take them back for lunch. And We use them, them all the time. I use them for yeah. quite a bit of <laughs> yeah. Yeah, our staff, the uh, Parks and Ann Street Department, go through annual training out at KSP, and then we have uh, inmates come out for minimum security, and they're on our mo crews every single day. Um, so, how, do we pay for that, or we do not? The state pays for them. They do send you have them. any idea how many labor hours a month or a year that we? Uh, take getting free labor if you will. It, it varies quite a bit because our numbers, the number of inmates that they send out varies yeah. quite a bit. Um, so what are some of the jobs they do? They're on our, mo our for, as far as the parks are concerned, they are on our mo crew every single day. Okay. Weed eating, blowing, uh, you'll see them out there, they're readily identified. Um, right. but, um, you know, the, they'll wear the red hats and the, the, all the state issued. Um, they also send a lunch with them. We do, go do? Pick, okay. yeah, we do go pick them up and take them back. Um, but and they, they come they're like I said they're minimum security so they, they come without a guard or anything like that you know generally drug offenders people like you know like that no violent uh, no violent offenders are put out in the, in the parks uh, and they screen them pretty heavily for that um, but it's we couldn't get our jobs done without it yeah. uh, okay. we so get, what would be the possibility of them maybe you using like along the creek to clean out some of the brush yeah we did uh, I, I one of the projects that I did um, when I was in Taylor's position was the cleaning of the grain silo property. And I just had to go through the KSP, they have a coordinator, and request a special project, special crew, and they meet you out there and stuff like that. And you can do that. Um, the area that you're talking about, and, and I talked to staff who was here at the time, it's, it's the behind residences that usually give people a little bit of pause when you're behind helms and, and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it was sort of an emergency type situation. So they are open for projects. It's just a matter of um, the area and, and how well it would be received, I guess. Well, I think we all got that question, so that, that yeah. answers it. It's not mm -hmm. a bad idea. It's just a matter of you don't want to, you don't want to. Uh, 
uh, have anybody feel uncomfortable. <laughs> and Mr. McDonald answered that gentleman, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Anything else from the commission? Yeah, just the quick update on the business park. Um, I, I briefed the commission uh, Friday briefly, um, but just for the public, I know there's a lot of interest on that. We do have funding from the county. The city does have its funding obviously still in place. Um, staff met a final time this morning with everybody involved to make sure that the RFP uh, included everything from finance and their clerk's office and public works and, and all that stuff. And we anticipate issuing the RFP on Friday. And uh, with a bid opening of that of Tuesday, May 30th. So that's when we would um, then see what responses we got and begin negotiations with the developer at that time. So Great. Everything's moving forward on that. Where are we at on 20th for uh, Eisenhower? Is the county going to be a county project or a city project? The road? Yes. It's a county project. Um, we have bi-weekly updates. Um, they're still moving forward with, they have some land acquisition to right. do out there. Um, Will we have any input on uh, the type of traffic? We, so that's, that's a good question. We were fortunate enough to get uh, their governing body to agree to an MOU. So we've, we're pretty locked in with uh, lane width, road width, uh, street lights, sidewalks. The big issue out there is the traffic control at 20th and Eisenhower. Right. What's it going to be? Um, I believe right now the county is still planning on a four-way stop. Um, there's some concern. A four-way stop. A four-way stop sign. Uh, there's some concern, you know, with uh, some development that we should have some some plans and plats in in the next couple weeks that the traffic warrants will call for a traffic signal. Um, the MOU does state that all necessary and appropriate traffic control should be in included in the project so you're looking at a little bit of interpretation there so uh something that we yeah, probably at some point need to get in front of the county and and uh and see what we still take the stop signs even though i'm opposed to them over the roundabout me too mm -hmm. I, agree. Right. I agree yeah and i think that's off the table for now Good. um Good. yeah the stop signs would be better than what's out there now and that'd be a good start but anyway it's my thought Anything else? All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Please begin voting with Commissioner Weekly. Aye. 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 We are adjourned.